Hello and welcome to this V-Ray 3 for Rhino 6 uh, interior renderings with an HDRI tutorial and so what we want to do here today is use um, an HDRI um, to render interiors. Um, so if you remember from previous tutorials we've used an HDRI to render the exterior, get the exterior lighting. So if we're this is our same little house we've been working on through the examples. If we take a look at um, where we sort of left off on the last rendering, um, we're using an HDRI out here to give this really nuanced lighting to our, our um, building. And then on the inside, we, if you remember, we sort of um, faked in some interior lighting um, so that we can get our, our interiors to glow in that sort of magic hour timing sort of way. Um, and we have a little bit of what I call interior noise uh, brought in here so that you just get the sense that there's something to compare and contrast with so the glass feels like it has that nice layered look. Um, so when you want to come actually inside the building and render that, you can't use that same trick, right? So if I render this inside with that set as a fake scene of an interior wall, it's going to literally look like a projected image on my wall and it makes no sense and it's it's not going to be helpful. Um, so what I want to do is now I'm, I'm forced to you know turn this interior walls layer off. Um, so maybe I'll just put my walls just onto like a light gray and click OK. Um, what I need to do now is find a way to render the inside space while I'm actually inside of it in a way that is is fast and efficient. So if I wanted to do this perfectly, I'd put in um, point lights and all these can fixtures and it would glow as if it's really glowing, but that you know maybe makes sense for the final rendering of the project, but as you're developing it or as um, you're just sort of testing out ideas um, or and more likely than not, you haven't even done an RCP and designed the ceiling plan. You're mostly just working on the massing of the space. Maybe you've copied a little furniture for scale. Um, but you want to see what it looks like and you want to be able to get a quick render output. Um, so let's look at a few ways to do that. So, so the first thing I'd want to get in line when I'm doing an interior rendering is I do want to I want to take advantage of the exterior sunlight as much as possible. So just like we did in the exterior lighting where we, we got our sun angle and our HDRI location set up, I'm going to tweak that a little bit. So if I if this is the view I want, this sort of one point perspective, I know that I want to get as much of the natural light in my unit as possible so that I don't have to add as much artificial light um, to get the glow correct. So to do that, I'm just going to go to my sun and I'm actually just going to change the angle at which mine's coming in. So it was coming in from this low southeast angle. I'm going to pull this in from almost a due east um, so that it's coming right at all my glazing on the east side here. I'm going to pull my angle up just a little bit higher to make sure it's, it's a little more intense. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing with my HDRI. I'm actually going to rotate this so that the brightest part of my HDRI is matching the sun. And that way, the lighting provided by the HDRI will also be coming into my uh, unit as far as possible. So I'm going to set that up and let that render and see where we are as a starting point. And then we can go from there to, to get this interior scene um, lit as, uh, as much as we can. All right, so what we're seeing here um, is that we're getting a pretty good amount of light in the space just from the exterior alone. So you can see that kind of shadow line where the sunlight's coming in. Um, you can also see our HDRI, HDRI in the background is doing the same thing as it was, but it's sort of inverse where um, you can start to see that sun is setting over here now. Um, it's bringing in some nice light atmospheric glowing um, light for us, but 
at the end of the day, this image is still just too dark, and it's 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 actually just too dark even to bring into Photoshop. It's it's extremely grainy. Part of that is just the low res, but in general, it's just it's a little bit too dark as a starting place. Um, so what I want to do is again just find the fast way to get this to a really good starting place where the scene feels like it's um, light enough that lights are turned on but without actually adding all the point lights so I'm gonna go in and go to my um, asset editor and if I go to my lighting tab and look what I have here um, so it's just the Sun and the HDRI uh, dome lights so what I want to do is actually go to the dome light and go down to my options um, I'm gonna go down to the shadows so I'm going to turn the shadows off. So this is a little bit confusing to follow along, but essentially it's not really creating shadows, but what it is doing is that the, the light that the HDRI creates will not go through materials. So by turning this off, now the HDRI will hit every single material as if there's no ceiling on it. So if, I'll try and explain that a little bit further. So right now, the HDRI light is not hitting this part of the floor. And that's because it, it can't go through the ceiling, obviously. So the HDRI light, light that is generated is coming through the glass and hitting this floor a little bit, but it's a little bit diffused by the glass. But we're not getting any of the light from the HDRI into the space because, obviously, of the ceilings. But if I turn the shadows off, what that means is that any surface that's facing up and out in any direction, it'll hit and layer by layer. So it's almost as if it, it treats every layer as glass where it can go through it, but every layer is solid and it will, will receive it. So if I turn the shadows off and then render, we'll start to see that we're getting a sort of quick way to get a nice even light over everything but we're not also not losing our interior shadows because we do like how the light pours in and we can see the mullions coming down the stairs and we do want the right side to read is generally brighter than the left side so it'll feel realistic um, you, you know the, right now the glass is doing sort of the inverse of what it was where we have all these really subtle sh uh, reflections on the inside but we can see the scene on the outside so we're getting a good balance of that, again, that layering of reflections and light, and, and then we have some nice shadows in here. We just want the whole thing to read generally brighter, and we want to, we don't necessarily want to do that entirely in Photoshop, because there'll be some, some graininess that you can't um, correct for. So if we get the whole starting point lighter from the beginning, then we can fine tune it in Photoshop. So we have turned the shadows off for our dome light, and now let's render and see what that does for us. So now you, what you can see is that the entire space is just much more evenly lit from the HDRI on the outside, um, but we're still not losing the you know the 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 extra glow that the sun would give and the shadows that it creates. So this just generally gets you to a better starting point. Obviously, from here we can go in and add specific point lights and fixtures um, and floor lamps and things like that, but. What we wanted to do is just get the whole scene up to a very good starting point without lighting any lights so that from here on out the lights that you do add are very selective and are um, you can you know sort of control your own destiny about how much time you want to spend where and if you want if you just are looking at the space itself and not necessarily interested in the lighting plan but you want to understand how the space feels this will get you to that point um, without actually lighting any or adding any lights at all um, and so we'll stop there for this uh, quick little interior rendering um, lighting tutorial thanks